and much higher energy costs. America is blessed with bountiful natural resources and an economic system that fo fosters innovative and technological entrepreneurship. Our American way has produced world-changing energy and technological advancement. Since 2018, the United States has been the number one producer of oil and natural gas in the world. We've also become a top energy exporter, which is helping to shift world markets and bolster our security against countries like Russia and Iran. Yet the Biden administration is relentlessly, relentlessly trying to throw all this away, as proven by the president's actions on day one in his administration, shutting down the Keystone Pipeline, curtailing oil permitting and production, and onerous new emission regulations. Just last month, the Biden administration announced a pause on any permits for LNG exports. No rule and comment period from any executive agency, not even an executive order, just a fact sheet. This unilateral move only enriches our adversaries, it jeopardizes our allies, and further threatens America's economic future. The bill we're considering today, H.R. 7176, the Unlocking Our Domestic LNG Potential Act of 2024, will continue this majority's work on reversing the harmful energy policies of the Biden administration. The legislation reverses President Biden's pause on LNG exports and repeals restrictions on the export and import of natural gas by providing the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission with the sole authority to approve or deny an application for the siting, construction, expansion, or operation of a gas of a facility to export or import natural gas. Restoring in LNG exports will strengthen the economy, furthering the United States leadership in reducing emissions. It will increase energy security of the United States and its allies. American LNG has roughly 40% lower life cycle emissions than Russian liquefied natural gas. American natural gas has helped us reduce emissions from more so than any other nation, both domestically and abroad. We have the capacity to continue helping our allies reduce their emissions by exporting clean, reliable, liquefied natural gas. And I find it astonishing in its incoherence that Democrats should advocate for a greater reliance on weather-dependent generation while also arguing that climate change is making weather patterns more unpredictable. That sort of grid management is a recipe for blackouts, like the one we saw in Texas three years ago, and it will lead to an economic disaster. It's my sincere hope that we can work together and our Democratic <coughs> friends will walk back from the brink and join us in our pursuit to put American families first by addressing rising energy costs that are punishing their household finances to meet America's energy demands, to provide jobs, to reduce environmental impacts, we must build a more comprehensive energy infrastructure. I will now yield to the ranking member for any comments he wishes to make. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, I guess we're now playing reruns at the Rules Committee. I think the Rules Committee has is, is become Nick at night. Uh, I mean, honestly, uh, did Republicans miss the case <laughs> that uh, Groundhog Day was two weeks ago? The House has considered language that's either identical or nearly identical to this bill, not once, not twice, not even three times. This will be the fourth time uh, language in this bill will potentially be considered on the House floor. Um, I might as well ask for unanimous consent that our witnesses' previous statements uh, be inserted into the record to save us all time. Maybe we've, we've heard this before. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do is ask unanimous consent to have my opening statement put into the record to save us time, and um, I mean, this is, uh, I mean, we are, there are other things we ought to be considering right now other than messaging bills uh, that, quite frankly, are not in the interest of the American people, and I will yield back. Was that a serious UC request? It was a serious UC request. I had a, a lot of stuff to say, but I've said it before, I think four times. So you want that? Yeah, I do, yeah. Okay, without objection. For the record, yeah. Without objection, so ordered. And without objection, any prepared statements that our witnesses may have will be included into the record. I want to welcome our first panel, Representative Jeff Duncan and Ranking Member Frank Pallone from the Committee on Energy and Commerce. Representative Duncan, we welcome your testimony. There you go. <clears throat> well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I would say uh, thank Ranking Member McGovern, but he left um, for recognizing me to speak today. 
on H.R. 7176, Unlocking Our Domestic LNG Potential Act of 2024. We have considered similar bill before, but a number of things have changed, one of which being Representative Johnson has left Congress to take a job in Ohio, and we saw the administration put an indefinite pause, as you said, Mr. Chairman, not by executive action, not by legislation, and this legislation was introduced by my friend August Pfluger, and it is identical to H.R. 1130. But H.R. 7176 will reverse President Biden's LNG export ban, a political stunt that's jeopardizing the American economy and our energy security. President Biden's LNG export ban is killing jobs and discouraging investments to create American jobs and bring manufacturing back to the United States from overseas. Yet, this is another move by the Biden administration to undercut the Energy Department here in the United States. This administration and congressional Democrats have taken over 170 actions to make it harder to produce oil and gas in the United States. One example of this is the Biden administration's offshore oil and gas leasing program, a five-year plan that has to be put out by the administration for future oil and gas lease sales in the Gulf of Mexico and other OCS areas. This is the fewest number of lease sales in United States history. Now, this program is currently facing legal challenges because restricting lease sales threatens U.S. energy security and makes energy less affordable for all Americans. It also cuts revenues to states like Texas and Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida that share in the Gulf of Mexico leasing program, revenue sharing. It also undermines the Land and Water Conservation Fund I'm a conservationist. I like that money collected in royalties from offshore lease sales actually sets aside property that can't be developed and preserves that property for the wildlife that I enjoy seeing and hunting and fishing for. President Biden's short-sighted energy policy is threatening generations to come, even in those areas, Mr. Chairman, people that like the outdoors. Lay's example in his LNG export ban, which has already disrupted global energy markets and discouraged our allies in Europe who are desperately seeking to eliminate their dependent on Russian natural gas. Europe needs our LNG. When the war in Ukraine happened, Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine. Europe looked west to the United States to provide American-produced LNG to meet their energy sources so they would be less dependent on an adversary, Putin's oligarch, for the energy sources. But instead, Europe's importing 40% more Russian LNG than they were before the invasion of Ukraine because they can't depend on the United States, it seems like, with this LNG export ban. H.R. 7176 will restore America's energy dominance and cement our position as the world's leading producer and exporter of natural gas. America's blessed with some of the largest reserves of energy in the world. We've got the strongest environmental protections and the best workforce to develop those resources. We believe in free markets, innovation, the rule of law. With all that going for us, we don't need to rely on OPEC or Russia or Iran for our energy needs. H.R. 7176 will ensure that our children and grandchildren do not have to beg dictators and autocrats for energy as the Biden administration has done. H.R. 7176 will also give our allies in Europe a crucial lifeline a safe and reliable supply of natural gas to wean themselves off of Russia. Putin has used the spigot, turning it off and on to influence political decisions made in Europe. In the past, we've never done that, Mr. Chairman. We've never used export of American energy resources to influence political policy or any other policy. In December 2015, Congress lifted the ban on crude oil exports on a bipartisan basis. Since we lifted the crude export ban, our energy production surged. Millions of jobs were preserved, new jobs were created in all 50 states. Our balance of trade improved. In 2019, we became a net exporter of petroleum for the first time since 1952. It's time that Congress lifts the regulatory restrictions that are stifling America's natural gas production. H.R. 7176 will create thousands of jobs here in the United States and encourage expansion of clean American natural gas. According to some estimates, LNG exports could add as much as $73 billion to the U.S. economy and upwards of 453,000 American jobs by 2040, jobs we need here in this country. H.R. 7176 will help reduce emissions globally 
by allowing our allies overseas to stop using dirty Russian fuel. According to DOE's own studies, LNG produced here in the United States is 40% cleaner than Russian gas. This bill contains strong protection to ensure that American natural gas will not go to state sponsors of terrorism or sanctioned countries. H.R. 7176 will advance U.S. global leadership and strengthen our economy. It's a win-win for the American people, for the American government, and for our friends and allies around the world. And if you want to approach it from a climate standpoint, cleaner burning U.S. produced natural gas exported to countries like Vietnam can help them reduce their global carbon emissions. Because guess what? Carbon emissions is not isolated in the United States of America. If we're concerned about the environment, we think about global carbon emissions. We can help countries take coal power offline and replace it with cleaner burning U.S. produced natural gas exported through American export terminals produced here at home by American jobs to help others lower their carbon emissions. So I want to thank you for the opportunity for me to provide a statement, and I encourage my colleagues to join me in support of this legislation. I look forward to your questions. I yield back. Chair, sure, thanks, the gentleman. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Thank you, Dr. Burgess. Um, I'm not going to do the Groundhog Day analogy again. I think that Mr. McGovern did that effectively, but I do feel like we've been here before. Um, it is the fourth time on this legislation, um, and I just think the bill is being brought up as a distraction. Uh, there's very little else to bring to the floor. House Republicans are once again returning to this bill, even though it's already passed the House twice, and even though it stands no chance of becoming law. Uh, and it's not going to become law because it's a bad bill. The legislation removes the requirement that the Department of Energy fine LNG exports to be in the public interest before approving export applications to non-free trade agreement countries. Uh, it's just a common sense requirement, but Republicans would rather give big oil and gas a free pass to raise prices on Americans in order to provide cheap natural gas to our adversaries, most importantly China. Uh, it would do to the natural gas market what Republicans did to the oil market eight years ago when they fully legalized crude oil exports. As a direct result, refineries across the Northeast shut down, and we now send 160 million barrels per year of crude oil to China. And anyone who is sick of and tired of Vladimir Putin and OPEC dictating the prices that Americans pay at the pump should be terrified of this bill because that's the exact th same thing that's going to happen with natural gas as happened with crude oil if this becomes law. That's because the price of natural gas in the U.S. would become more exposed to the decisions of other large natural gas producers in the world, uh, like uh, Russia and Iran. Now, Republicans claim to be tough on China. I hear that all the time in our Energy and Com Commerce Committee, how we're so tough on China. But China is exactly who this bill would benefit. In 2021, they were the second largest recipient of American LNG. Chinese LNG purchasers have continued to snap up any long-term deal they can from American exporters. Just last summer, Xinyer, I guess is how it's pronounced, announced it had signed a 20-year deal to export its LNG to China. And what, what's really happening here is we're removing crucial safeguards, and that and then the, the natural gas market becomes the Wild West, allowing our adversaries to purchase even more of our energy to use against us. Now, the Biden administration has taken a different approach that prior, prioritized the needs of the American people rather than big oil and gas. Last month, as was mentioned by uh, Mr. Duncan, uh, the, the administration announced a temporary pause on new LNG export authorizations while the Department of Energy completes a public interest analysis. Anyone who says uh, this is a ban, which my colleague, uh, Mr. Duncan, has said on LNG exports, I think is completely wrong. I think that's misinformation. The temporary pause does not affect current exports. It does not affect exports from facilities that are under construction. It doesn't even affect exports from facilities that haven't begun construction but are fully permitted. So DOE has issued enough permits to triple our LNG exports by the 2030s. This means there are no impacts on our European allies, as the European Commission noted when it put out a statement essentially saying that. And I also want to note how ridiculous it is to have the same Republicans who refuse to support aid for our Ukrainian allies express concern about providing European LNG. A majority of House Republicans voted against support for the Ukraine the last time it came up, even as they continue to suffer, uh, as the Ukrainians continue to suffer from this 
barbaric invasion. At the end of the day, ensuring that LNG exports are in the American people's public interest is something that we should all want. Instead, this Republican bill assumes that all LNG exports are automatically in the public interest, which they're, they're not. And that's just uh, absurd, considering that multiple analysis have found that increased LNG exports directly lead to higher natural gas prices here at home. So I think, in my opinion, this bill is nothing more than an, I, I mean, it's, I, I, I forego the Groundhog Day analogy, so now I'll use the Valentine's Day analogy and say that this is a early Valentine gift to polluters that would harm the American people. Not only that, but this bill apparently is coming to the floor under a closed rule with no amendments allowed. And again, so much for the open process that the Republicans claim to be committed to. Um, I may sound harsh, but I really think that this is kind of an outrage, guys, that, um, you know, that, the, the, that there's nothing to stop continued um, tripling, if you will, of LNG exports. But at the same time, it makes sense to have some kind of updated public interest analysis so that prices don't rise again for gas here in the United States. And with that, Mr. Chairman, Dr. Burgess, I yield back. Well, I want to thank both of our witnesses for being here with us today and, and speaking on this important topic. Chairman Duncan, let me just ask you, um, you kind of brought it up in your opening statement, but for people who say it seems like we've seen this bill in the Rules Committee before, is that an accurate statement? I think we've seen Bill Johnson's bill in this committee before um, because I testified for the Chair uh, Rogers, yes. So um, because of the um, retirement of, of Chairman Johnson, it became necessary to reintroduce the bill with a new sponsor. Is that not correct? That's the way I understand it, yes, sir. So if you believe in the concept that this is a valuable resource that needs to be appropriately exported, then it's necessary to bring up Chairman Johnson's bill again, now under August Pfluger's uh, being the lead author. So it, it seems to make sense that we would hear it again. I guess I would further state that I mean, we both know this because we sat through the hearings, we sat through the markups. This was part of a much larger energy package. And I'll just make a pitch for the permitting part of that bill also needs to be considered because uh, we do need the way we do need the ability to move natural gas around in this country, and the lack of pipelines has been severely constraining. I want to point out, <clears throat> and I'm going to introduce <clears throat> this for the record, and without objection so ordered, this is a uh, Wall Street Journal article from about a year ago that talks about the five-year engineering feat Germany pulled off in months because of their horror at having natural gas supplies cut off from the war in Ukraine and then the Nord Stream pipeline, Germany got busy. And they got busy with rapid permitting and building of a liquefied natural gas import facility and built it literally in, in record time. And it's not just one, there's, there's several that they're building. So I, I would just ask, I mean, it seems like there is a market for the product that the United States is selling, is there not? There is, and they would rather buy it from the United States than buy it from adversarial countries like Russia or Venezuela or um, Iran. And they're going to buy it from somewhere because they've got to meet their energy needs. And, and we've seen the problems with enriching Russia and Iran. They've destabilized the geopolitical situation around the world. Why wouldn't it make sense to sell to our ally, West Germany, or, or I'm sorry, Germany, and uh, not cause them to seek to go buy it from a country that's going to ultimately be damaging on the world stage. Absolutely. And as I mentioned in my statement, Vladimir Putin has turned the spigot off to Europe before it influenced them in their political posture. So um, the United States doesn't do that. We sell to the highest bidder. We help our allies. And after Russia invaded Ukraine, Eastern Europe and Western Europe look west to the United States to sell them liquefied natural gas to meet their energy needs. So let me just address the fact that this has been referred to as a messaging bill. Here's the problem. The problem is basically President Biden has decided to restrict the sale of natural gas to our allies via a press release, not an executive order, no rule and comment 
period was was available to uh, to constituents. So it is necessary to send a message, and the message is not no, but hell no, President Obama. Mr. Plon, you looked like you wanted to say something, so I'll be happy to well, yield to you. Well, I mean, look, I, I'm trying not to be too bad here, but you know, a couple of days ago, your presidential candidate, former President Trump, literally said that you know he didn't care what Russia did in Eastern Europe, that they could take everything and it wouldn't make any difference to him. And most of you are, and your own speaker has said you're not even willing to provide uh, aid to Ukraine under what the Senate has passed. He's not even going to take up the bill. So, I mean, it's a little ironic for you guys to be talking about aid to Ukraine and fighting Putin when your uh, candidate is saying, or your former president is saying, Putin can do whatever he wants and I don't care. But the point I'm trying to make is that right now um, there's so much supply that the European Commission has actually said, you know, we're not going to be hindered in any way by, uh, you know, the need for exports of LNG to the United States. This is all about the public interest, right? And the concern which existed with oil when you decided to have unlimited supply of that sent overseas. Now, if you did this with natural gas, the price of gas is going to go up here in the United States. And the President Biden is simply saying, we need to take a pause and look at this from the public interest point of view, which is required by law under, this, under the Natural Gas Act. So what's the big problem here? We're not saying there's going to be a, a supply problem uh, to Europe. Uh, if anything, the only but country that's going to benefit from this bill is China. And every day, you know, in, in our committee, you guys keep coming in and saying China's a problem. We're competing with China. Well, why are you going to give them unlimited supplies of natural gas so they can build up their military, build up their economy when they're the major competitor to us from a security and economic point of view. I just don't understand how you can justify this, but again, I've already said this. I'm just repeating the same thing. Well, I think Chairman Duncan pointed out accurately that uh, global emissions are a problem globally. Well, I haven't and even if, mentioned the climate aspect. If you, know. if you want China to reduce its emissions, provide them a pathway for that to happen. Is that essentially what you said in your testimony? Absolutely. And I would love to see China buy more U.S. produced natural gas. I'd rather every country buy it. It's an open market. The producers can sell it to the highest bidder out there. That's how a capitalist society that makes America so great works. You know, the Democrats want to say that um, this isn't a ban, that this is a temporary pause, but it's an indefinite pause. It has the same effect as a ban. And they say that it's so that the DOE can do yet another study um, to determine the public interest. Look, the DOE has already commissioned five studies to examine the effects of U.S. LNG exports, and the results unanimously demonstrate the benefits to the U.S. economy and domestic natural gas prices. DOE has also issued two studies that examine the life cycle greenhouse gas impacts of U.S. LNG exports showing strong environmental benefits. And so two prior presidential administrations conducted these studies without blocking export permits or by pausing them through some sort of press release. Well, I thank both of you for your testimony today. I found it uh, very enlightening. I will be happy to yield to the gentlelady from Pennsylvania for her questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hate to flog a groundhog, but, um, you know, we've moved from Groundhog Day, as annoying as that is, to Groundhog Month because um, here we are with another week that is shaping up to be as chaotic and useless as last week, while critical issues are going unaddressed. Um, the speaker has served up a calendar of do-overs for this week on legislation that already failed to pass the House at least once, like the Mayorkas impeachment or the rule for the SALT bill, or bills like this one before this committee, which has already passed the House a couple times in different formats. So our constituents are rightly asking why the speaker's wasting everyone's time on meaningless bills when there's work to be done. The answer is depressingly simple. It does not appear that House Republicans are able to govern. They can't organize themselves. They can't work with their Senate counterparts. They can't work with the White House for the public benefit. And all they seem to care about is placating their noisiest, most extreme members. And they certainly don't seem to care about solving problems or producing results for the American people. Here's a newsflash for our colleagues on the other side of the aisle. The American people don't 
want antics and stunts and fake impeachments. They want solutions to the problems they're dealing with. They want a government that works better for them, not for politicians with their eye on the next election. So let's look at the bill before us, H.R. 7176, as we have several times before. Um, I've got a number of objections to the bill. First, of course, is that we've already passed this legislation, and it's now being brought up just to have something, anything to talk about this week, rather than national security or some of the really pressing issues here. The tortured explanation for why we have to bring this up again, as if there haven't been centuries of precedent where when a member retires or passes away, another member's name is just sub, uh, submitted to, as a replacement sponsor. I mean, it's absurd. So this is just legislative noise, meaningless filler to make up for the House Republicans' failure to consider or pass military aid for our allies, humanitarian aid for those most in need, a border deal, or a bipartisan agreement on a budget that's been overdue since September. So that's number one. The second is this bill is a huge handout to big oil and gas that is going to force American families to pay more in energy costs. Estimates say that this bill would increase home heating prices for American families by billions in the next year and a half after it's enacted. When supporters of this bill say it's in the public interest, they mean it's in the interest of their supporters in big oil and gas who expect to reap record profit selling American fuel overseas. That's not putting Americans first or promoting U.S. energy independence. The U.S. is already the world's largest exporter of LNG. We export more than Russia, Iran, and the oil-rich Gulf states. Under the leadership of President Biden and with policies passed in the Inflation Reduction Act, the U.S. now stands to be a world leader in energy production, both in green energy and oil and gas. And finally, I, I appreciate Ranking Member Pallone um, correcting the record that the White House has not issued a ban on LNG exports, and in fact, current exports and projected exports are going to continue. This is just a pause on approvals for new LNG exports. And that's really important to the community that I represent, because I represent a frontline community that is most at risk from the serious hazards associated with facilities that export LNG overseas. For that reason, I fully support the pause on um, new application for facilities for exporting LNG. We need time to evaluate the climate, health, safety, and economic risks of increasing LNG production and export, particularly for frontline communities like Chester, Pennsylvania. Look, overall, we're running out of time to meet our climate goals. And whatever short-term benefits Republicans may think they get from expanded LNG export, that may be greatly overshadowed by the risks to the communities forced to host those export facilities, the climate-related disasters to come, and the increased prices to American consumers. I don't think we should continue down this path. Each year, we are watching the climate disasters increase, whether it's Florida and the Gulf, course, Gulf Coast getting slammed by stronger hurricanes, or extreme weather events, including tornadoes and extreme flooding in southeastern Pennsylvania. So I strongly oppose this bill. I urge my Republican colleagues to quickly bring up a vote on aid to our allies. And I would yield back. Can Mr. I? Cologne, uh, did you have something? Yeah, you just wanted briefly, to say? if you would yield yeah. to me. You know, the, the thing that um, most concerns me about uh, Chairman Duncan's statement was the statement where he said that, uh, you know, this should be an open market and we should be able to sell, you know, the oil and gas companies should be able to sell whatever they want to anybody. Uh, I mean, that's not the way this works. I mean, you've got OPEC, right? You've got these countries that are our adversaries that, um, you know, decide how much oil or gas they're going to produce, um, you know, based on their own self-interest, right? I mean, they, you know, Saudi Arabia decides we're going to increase uh, production or we're going to reduce production so that they can monopolize and control the price. And, and for us to just say that's okay, you know, we'll let just them decide everything, is just, it's not, it's wrong. Uh, I mean, the problem is when you have this, if you buy into that, uh, then you're basically saying we're not going to in any way control the market um, for what is produced here that can be used here. 
And I just don't buy into that. I just don't. And, and the other thing uh, that uh, the Chairman Duncan said is that, you know, this, uh, public, this pause is going to go on indefinitely. That's not the case. I mean, the administration has made it quite clear that, you know, this could take a few months or so, but they're not pausing this indefinitely, uh, not by any means. So, you know, what we're really saying is that the law now allows for this public interest analysis on individual applications as well as a process. And the administration is saying, you know, before we uh, look at additional applications, uh, we want to look at the process of how we decide what's in the public interest in general. And that's only helpful to the American people. Let's not just do everything that big oil and gas wants. That's what I think this bill is all about. But I um, yield back. Thank you. Thank I think, you, General I think Martin. I have to agree with you that the public interest has to be far beyond what what's good for big oil and big gas, though obviously we are um, a capitalist economy, but we also have an obligation to protect our American consumers, make sure they can heat their homes, um, and protect the safety of the folks who are most directly impacted by these export facilities. So I appreciate your raising those points, as well as raising the fact that this is not a ban on export, that exports will continue in large measure um, and with that, I would yield back. <laughs> gentlelady yields back, Chair. Thanks to Gentlelady. The lady from Minnesota is recognized for questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. A um, lot going on in some of those statements, and Chairman Duncan, I wanted to give you the opportunity to respond if you'd like to. Yeah, there was so much. Um, <laughs> look, this is indefinite pause. There's no timeline on it. What that says to the market is a man. It puts uncertainty in the marketplace. It puts uncertainty in the minds of our friends and allies around the world that are counting on the U.S. to be able to produce LNG to meet their energy needs in an uncertain environment in Eastern Europe. And you mentioned in your statement that the U.S. is producing more natural gas than any other country. I would rather the United States produce a lot more gas and lessen the world's influence on these OPEC countries that you mentioned that is a cartel that sets the prices. And look, energy prices, gas prices, let me find the exact number here. The average Henry Hub spot price in December of 2023, less than two months ago, was just 53 cent higher than when LNG was exported from the United States in February of 2016. This is really a supply and demand issue. Global demand has gone up. Supply needs to go up to meet the global demand. We have the supply in this country. We can produce a heck of a lot more. We should be producing a heck of a lot more. We should be utilizing a heck of a lot more in this nation to generate power. Instead of picking winners and losers in the marketplace and throwing all the IRA money at green initiatives, and this side of the aisle likes renewables just as much as you guys do. But we don't think the administration should pick winners and losers, and we also understand the dynamics, as the chairman mentioned, of intermittent power, weather-dependent power sources. We have solar in our country, in our state, in South Carolina. Solar, Mr. Norman. Half the day is producing power.
barriers, restricting um, and not and not opening up uh, LNG production exports, could that have, in in many ways, certainly pre-invasion two years ago, hastened and encouraged the invasion because we 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 left our European allies, including Ukraine and everybody in Europe, more dependent on Russian gas. The gentleman's correct. Eastern Europe, including Ukraine, were heavily reliant upon Vladimir Putin's oligarch for their energy resources. Um, we could change that forever by exporting more U.S. produced resources. Uh, does a moratorium on, on LNG exports help or hurt Russia? If this stays in effect and the United States cannot export the natural gas that Eastern Europe needs, they're going to look to Russia, and it will help pad the pocket and fund the war of Vladimir Putin. Uh, with respect to some of the stuff you talked about, about the rest of the world, right, some, something in the zip code of half the world does not have reliable power, right? Something in the zip code. Certainly a third, you know, three billion-ish or so people do not have access to reliable power. Does that sound right to you? That sounds about right. Um, and so for the, for the sake of the world and exports, right, exporting liquefied natural gas, encouraging the production and the building out of gas-fired plants, certainly improves the condition of people throughout the world and allows them to adapt to climate, frankly, better, right? Our climate-related deaths are actually at historic lows, right, because we're able to manage and adapt to the climate based on abundant, reliable energy. Is that fair? That's fair to say. And by restricting the availability of reliable energy, we're making people more subject to climate uh, problems, right? Because they're not able to have the energy necessary to deal with any issues that are thrown at them climate-wise. So the hurricane that wiped out Galveston in, you know, whatever, 19, whatever that was, uh, yeah, 1900, um, right? We now have the ability to deal with those issues in greater strength, get power back up and running. I mean, Governor DeSantis had power up and running within 72 hours in most places in 90% of the areas in Florida um, because we have uh, a stronger, more resilient, more reliable grid. Is that, is that fair? That's fair to say, and I would just add that you're keeping people in energy poverty around the globe without allowing them, not just the, from the climatic events, but energy poverty, not being able to have the standard of living that they desire. And, and was this uh, state of affairs made worse last year with the passage of the so-called Inflation Reduction Act and the numerous subsidies in it that went predominantly 90% of which to billion-dollar type corporations, and much of which goes to China, much of those subsidies? Uh, uh, would you agree with that as a general matter? I agree with that. Um, and in fact, was not the main purpose in many ways of, of the Inflation Reduction Act to try to drive, frankly, frankly American natural gas out of power. This administration has targeted American fossil fuel production from day one. President Biden said it on the campaign trail, and he's lived true to his campaign promises. Well, a question for the, the, the ranking member, if you will. The, you had a reference the extent to which the um, uh, uh, White House, uh, you know, what it was doing. And the White House put out a what they are saying on its decision, and they highlighted a bunch of statements. And one of the things you commented on was that we're not, we're not ending LNG, right? And uh, the White House put out and advertised it and tried to trumpet their decision, what they are saying, a number of statements from Al Gore, uh, who said world leaders agreed on a transition away from fossil fuels. Uh, the president's taking that pledge seriously. Uh, the president and CEO of Natural Resources Defense Council, let's be clear about the public interest, it's time to phase out fossil fuels. Putting all those aside, Sierra Club actually put out a statement literally that said, huge news, POTUS, and Secretary Granholm have taken a bold and historic action to stop LNG. So the White House trumpeted that as a message, as a marketing tool for the success of their plan. And so how is that consistent with the idea that we're not actually trying to attack and end LNG, i.e. American natural gas, that is going around the world and get, lifting people out of poverty, making our uh, industry stronger, making Russia weaker, making Ukraine stronger, all of those things that we get from exporting LNG these groups say stop LNG. How is that consistent with the idea that we're not working to stop LNG? Well, I haven't commented at all about the climate aspect of this because, frankly, I was trying to, I wasn't sure that 
you on the other side of the aisle were that concerned about that. I thought we were mainly concerned about price and, you know, what we were going to do here. I mean, the, the problem, in my opinion, is that the administration's main focus here when we talk about the public interest, in my opinion, is to make sure that price does not go up for the American people. We know that uh, there are occasions in the past where the price has increased dramatically, uh, that, uh, you know, because of, um, you know, when, when uh, it's not available here and it's being exported abroad, we know the same thing is true about crude oil. The price went up uh, significantly. Plus, uh, in terms of all these other countries that you are so concerned about, um, the reality is that the main uh, countries that are used that use uh, natural gas are the European countries, and the very commission, EU commission, said that this is not going to affect anything because there's going to be plenty of LNG available. In fact, it might be three times as much, even with the existing production and shipping overseas. So, you know, I'm trying to focus on the fact that our allies aren't going to be hurt. Uh, our adversaries, like China, are the ones that, that are mainly dependent on, uh, and more and more dependent on, uh, LNG from the United States. I don't really care about China. As far as I'm concerned, you can, you can suffocate their energy supply. Uh, I'm mainly concerned about the U.S. and the fact that if, you, if we don't have this public interest analysis that you want to get rid of, then these applications are going to be reviewed without knowing what the price is going to be for American consumers. Uh, we could talk about the environment if you want to, but uh, the, the, this public interest analysis is I think primarily focused on not having the price go up for Americans. That's my concern. Uh, Mr. Duncan, how does that compare to the point that we we're making before that there was upwards of 50% um, availability of gas production if we were to unleash American natural gas and not constrain it? In other words, do we believe the market is actually constrained or restricted, as, as was just you know, alluded to or suggested, in terms of what that would mean for price? Or do we have the ability to robustly produce American natural gas, both for the benefit of the American people, if unleashed, as well as for exports, uh, in order to facilitate and help allies and, and uh, you know, drive production of gas facilities around the world? Well, it comes down to supply and demand, and we have a tremendous amount of supply here in the United States. Um, we hear comments about price increases, but we led the world uh, in energy production. We lifted the export ban on crude oil. We saw energy prices actually go down in this country post-2019. When energy prices started going up was when the Biden administration started restricting production, restricting future lease sales. This isn't a overnight phenomenon. Mm. You have to have planning. You have to have investment. You have to have development. You have to have production. You have to have production tied into pipelines those pipelines to deliver those resources, whether it's liquid oil to refineries or natural gas to LNG exports or to the utilities to utilize those. You have to produce, you have to deliver, you have to utilize, and then we can export. We have an abundance to export. And it will not affect prices by continuing the export. Democrats have said, we're not banning the existing uh, export terminals that are out there. We're just wanting to ban future or pause future investment in that. Well. If we, and this is an indefinite pause, let's assume that, that this administration remains in power for another four years, that's delaying another four years of planning and investment and development and production and delivery. And so this was misguided press release by this administration, but it was intentional because the intention of this administration since before they moved into power was to stop and kill the U.S. fossil fuel industry, period. Uh, is the gentleman aware that uh, the increased use of solar farms and large use of that has created a number of stalled projects in this country based on environmental impact and working through the environmental impact statements of said solar farms, uh, as well as the fact that the windmill uh, farms and the products that are produced them, the amount of energy that goes into the production of the, of the actual windmills themselves and then the actual uh, destruction of those that they're very difficult to uh, uh, you know recycle or, or to deal with and in fact we bury these large windmills uh, blades and so forth in many uh, places and circumstances is the gentleman aware of those implications that we have for a, a massive shift in that direction away from say clean burning natural gas in terms of the impact on the environment we haven't even begun to fathom 
the environmental impact of uh, some of these renewables, whether it's the batteries that go in EVs, into life of windmills, into life of solar panels, into life of EVs, uh, and what that might do to the environment. Last, last two questions. One is that uh, the gentleman, I assume, is aware that coal has something like 1,100 coal-fired plants uh, that they operate and they're producing two a week. It accounts for about 30% of global emissions in terms of what they're producing. Uh, so to the extent that we can have liquefied natural gas being exported, to the extent that we can encourage China to use liquefied natural gas or nuclear, which they're building some of, uh, that, that certainly um, would have a net positive impact on emissions, correct, if, if, if one is concerned about CO2. And then and the final point is, is that, does this sound right to you? Um, I read a study uh, in which EQT, EQT Corporation CEO Toby Rice pointed out that replacing coal power overseas around the world, so all of the coal fired plants that are currently in operation in China, India, and other places around the world, that if we were to replace those with American LNG, uh, putting aside nuclear and other uh, uh, options, would have the environmental impact of electrifying every vehicle in the United States, putting solar on every household in America, and adding 54,000 industrial scale windmills, doubling the United States wind capacity combined. That's if we were to replace coal fired plants around the world with liquefied natural gas exports. Now, obviously, we can't do that in one single fell swoop. Uh, obviously, there's going to be other countries that are going to explore different options. But does the, is the point does the point remain that the production of American gas is that a net benefit for overall uh, environment environmental benefit as well as economic benefit for the American people? Is it would the gentleman agree? The gentleman's correct. So therefore, uh, I would uh, uh, thank the gentleman for being here and for his support of this bill. And I yield back. Chair, sure, thanks, the gentleman. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from New York is recognized. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and, and Representative Duncan. Thank you for your leadership across the board on energy issues um, uh, and bringing this legislation forward. Uh, the decision by the Biden administration to halt the export of American LNG will cripple our economy by killing good-paying jobs, driving up home energy costs for hardworking families, and hurting American businesses. Full stop. Uh, what this administration did is to stab in the back the very people who fuel our nation. People like the small-scale natural gas producers in my own district in the southern tier of New York who, despite miles of red tape in, state, uh, in a state government that has it out for them, uh, they've perse persevered and they've continued to create jobs and economic opportunity in upstate New York. And now when the Unlocking Our Domestic LNG Potential Act was previously introduced by former Representative Bill Johnson, the administration argued that this bill would jeopardize key protections for residential and industrial consumers. Uh, as well as jeopardize our national and energy security. Uh, Congressman Duncan, can you remind us uh, once more today how President Biden's order halting the export of American LNG jeopardizes our national and energy security? Yeah, under both Republican and Democrat administration, DOE has consistently held that additional U.S. LNG exports will strengthen our national security, to help our friends and allies lessen their dependence on adversaries and help our political, geopolitical uh, posture in the world. And how does preventing the free flow of American LNG ultimately hurt consumers? Well, restricting uh, LNG exports hurts Americans. Um, it hurts American producers. It uh, hurts American jobs. Um, exports are there to meet the market demands. And um, look, we, we've, we've covered all these points that Cleaner burning, American produced natural gas, which we have an abundance of. This nation's blessed. There's so much gas I can't even truly measure how much natural gas there is in this nation. Whether it's the Marcellus close to where you live or whether it's the Permian Basin close to where Chip lives. We have the resource. We need more infrastructure to move that resource around. We need to utilize more of that resource here at home to lower our carbon emissions, to generate baseload power that's dispatchable, always ready, always on, always available. And then we need to export that. Export that to help our friends and allies lessen their dependence on OPEC countries like Iran, Venezuela, or Russia, to have a stable supply of energy resources, cleaner burning U.S. produced natural gas that burns 40% cleaner than Russian gas, help them lower their carbon emissions. We don't manipulate energy and energy prices or energy flow to manipulate politics in certain countries. We just never have done that. Vladimir Putin has. 
He's turned the spigot on and off. Eastern Europe had a reality check with the war in Ukraine and their reliance on Russia. They started looking west, the United States of America, to be that strong, stable ally, to provide the resources that they need. And they're still looking west. And we can help their national security, we can help their energy security, and we can help improve the quality of life of so many people around the world. At the same time, lower global carbon emissions. This is a win-win. The Biden administration's temporary pause on this uh, is misguided. And to the point of investment, can you remind us once again how this ban will impact investment, particularly long term, in the LNG industry and in LNG infrastructure? You know, as I've said many times, uh, these projects just don't turn on and off overnight. They have to have planning. First, you have to find the resource. Then, if it's public land, you've got to go through a lease sale and buy the resource and hope that the resource is a developable amount when you punch that well in the ocean or uh, on, a, on a piece of property. Hope that there's a quantity there that will help return your investment into that well and produce enough to sell. But then you go through all the permits and, and, and ability to drill that well. And once you do that, then you've got to invest in tying that well and that production that comes out of it into a pipeline system to deliver that resource somewhere, whether it's liquid resource to a refinery or whether it's a gas resource to a utility or to an export terminal. It takes a tremendous amount of planning and investment, attracting investment, development, job creation, permitting process. This doesn't happen overnight. And any sort of hiccup of pause like we're seeing out of the Biden administration is going to disrupt that future investment, that future planning. So, like, this pause will have detrimental impacts on the development of future energy production in this country that can be exported to help others around the world that we've mentioned so many times. And finally, other than the radical environmental groups who cheer this administration's uh, embrace of nonsensical energy policy that will leave Americans without energy that is uh, less reliable, less affordable, and less secure, who else stands to benefit from this halt uh, in U.S. LNG exports? Ask that question, the, the end of that. Who, who else stands to benefit other than, you know, the radical environmental left? Vladimir Putin stands to benefit. And uh, it'll be to the detriment of folks that are in energy poverty around the globe that we can help. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, thank you for your time today, your, your leadership on this legislation and, and energy issues. And for those who support this administration's effort to cripple um, American LNG and oppose this legislation, I hope that they can think for a moment about seniors living on fixed incomes in rural communities like so many constituents in my own district in the southern tier of New York who depend on affordable natural gas to heat their homes to live life and death situation. Uh, the policies that this administration is pushing, cheered on by the far left, are making life harder than ever, less certain than ever, and for the vast majority of Americans, you know, creating an energy uncertainty. Uh, this is the legacy of the Biden administration's energy policies, and I'm proud to be a co-sponsor of this legislation to help put the brakes on these destructive policies, and I look forward to supporting it on the floor. And with that, I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Chair, thanks. The gentleman, the gentleman yields back. The gentlelady from New Mexico is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And as I was sitting here listening uh, to this uh, answers and questions, it sounded as if though you know the 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 member was very concerned uh, about Russia and what it was doing, and about Vladimir Putin and what he was doing. And it strikes me that the biggest thing we could do uh, to address this issue is to take up the bill on the House floor to provide funding to help Ukraine beat back Russia and beat back Vladimir Putin's invasion. Uh, do, would you agree, uh, ranking member, that that might be the best way we can help Ukraine, the best way we can help our European allies? And in fact, aren't they begging us to do just that? There's no question that that's exactly what they want us to do. And I already mentioned how the uh, rep likely Republican candidate said the other day that he didn't care if Putin took over uh, Europe and let Putin do whatever he wants, was his direct quote that, that came up in the last couple of days. I mean, I don't know how anybody 
who supports uh, former President Trump being in office again can argue that somehow they're trying to help, uh, they're, they're trying to um, you know, hurt Putin. It's just the opposite. He says uh, Putin can do whatever he wants. But if the gentlewoman would let me, I just wanted to, I hadn't talked at all about the environmental aspects of this, to be honest. Please share that with because, us. Because um, I really, you know, maybe wrongly felt that the other side of the aisle wasn't terribly concerned about that. But I do, but certain statements were made that I think I have to rebut. First of all, the ideas being uh, put out there by uh, Chairman Duncan um, that somehow natural gas uh, is clean and that natural gas uh, would replace coal, right, in a lot of these countries where we're ex, uh, exporting natural gas. I mean, first of all, natural gas is not clean. Natural gas is a major contributor to the climate crisis and to the increase in uh, uh, greenhouse gases and global warming. It's not clean. In fact, there's a, a serious concern that the methane emissions in particular uh, from natural gas, both from the transportation, the liquefaction, the regasification, all these things that have to be done, that LNG is actually worse than coal uh, from an emissions uh, perspective. Um, and that's one of the things that the administration wants to do with this public interest analysis to see you know, what the climate impact is. Um, and, and we also don't have any reason to believe that any of these countries that they want to, ex, you know, I think at one point, you tell me if I'm wrong, um, the uh, chairman, um, Duncan, said, well, you know, uh, China's building all these uh, coal plants. Uh, you know, wouldn't it be better if we send all, you know, if we send our natural gas there and then they'll stop building or stop using the coal plants? Well, first of all, there's no reason to believe that. You know, they're doing everything in China. They're building the coal plants. They're building, uh, they're, they're building all the solar facilities, the wind power facilities. I mean, they're doing everything, and there's no reason to believe they're going to stop using, building coal plants because we send them our natural gas. But the main thing I wanted to say is what this bill, we're kind of getting away, what this bill is all about is the Republicans saying that before any natural gas um, uh, is, uh, right now the law says in the Natural Gas Act that before any natural, any uh, uh, LNG facilities built or application is approved, we have to do a public interest analysis. That's been on the books for a long time. And what they're saying is we're not going to do that anymore. There will be no public interest analysis, not by this administration or future administrations. Well, that makes absolutely no sense. The public interest analysis is there to make sure that America isn't hurt by these LNG exports. And primarily that focuses on the price because we know that the price has gone up oftentimes when more LNG or in another case more crude oil, which they also eliminated any kind of analysis. If we don't have that ability to analyze not only the climate aspects, but the price aspects, the economic, the security aspects, then we are putting ourselves open to, you know, China, Russia, whoever, right? All we're saying is that we want to be able to look at this public interest and all in what's in, in the interests of America, and all they're saying is, we don't need to do that anymore. Well, to me, that doesn't make any sense. And, you know, I, I want to make everyone understand that that's what this bill is about. The U.S. will no longer be able to look to see whether these LNG exports are in America's public interest. And I just think that's wrong. But I know I've taken up too much time, so I yield back to... Well, what also doesn't make any sense is why we're spending time on this bill yet again when it's already in the HR1, when we've already dealt it, and when, you know, on March 1st, we have a looming uh, crisis of we haven't funded our government. On March 8th, we have our second step of that looming crisis when we have a, a security package that has been passed uh, by the Senate uh, and uh, that apparently we're not going to take up here. So there is important work that needs to be done to protect Americans, to serve Americans, and we are simply not doing that important work. And that's what doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, and with that, I yield back. The gentlelady yields back, Chair. Thanks, the gentlelady. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is now recognized. Thank you, Mr. Questions. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Mr. Duncan, would you like to respond to any of that? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, the DOE has already commissioned five studies to examine the effects of U.S. LNG exports, and the results unanimously just demonstrate the benefits U.S. economy and domestic natural gas prices Two prior presidential administrations conducted these studies 
without blocking export permits by pausing reviews. This pause is intentional. It goes back to a campaign promise that President Biden made. I think he was in your state when he said it. They were going to stop fossil fuel production in this country. And this is just another play in that playbook. How detrimental do you think it will be if we don't reverse these policies? Well, it's going to be detrimental to future investment. It's going to be detrimental to our future ability to export to our countries. Africa is going to be a growing continent, and they're going to need U.S. export to get out of energy poverty, to help grow their economy. If they don't get it from the United States. They're going to get it from Russia and Iran, other OPEC countries. And we need to capitalize on that potential. U.S. natural gas burns about 40 percent cleaner than Russian gas. I was surprised that the ranking member said coal burns cleaner than natural gas. Can we export more coal? Because I'm fine with that as well. Um, if we approach this topic from the left's view, and that's addressing climate change and global carbon emissions, Exporting more cleaner burning US, U.S. produced natural gas will help countries lower their carbon emissions and help global emissions. If you just want to approach it from that, not from the economy, not from it, just approach it from that, exporting U.S. produced natural gas will help lower global carbon emissions, period. And they keep talking about China. China has a growing industrial base. Not sure about their population growth because of past policy growing industrial base that's hungry for power. If we're so worried about China, why did the president go on TikTok last night and help the Chinese government and the Chinese corporations by using a Chinese-run platform and generating money for China? That's just hypocritical, I think. But this bill today will help unleash American energy production, delivery, utilization and export. And it's the right thing, not only for American producers, not only for the American economy, not only for the American geopolitical position, not only for global carbon emissions. It's the right thing to help our friends and allies and others around the world improve their standard of living quality of life, period. I yield back. Thanks, Mr. Duncan. I appreciate it. With that, I yield back. Sure. Thanks, the gentleman. Gentleman yields back to the gentleman from Colorado who is now recognized for questions. Uh, I thank the chairman, and I will not take too long. I'm glad I could make it to the hearing for this incredibly riveting discussion that apparently this committee has had multiple times already over the course of the last 13 months. I guess this is the third time or fourth, fourth. time. Fourth, sorry. Fourth time we're considering this bill in one iteration or another. Literally had a rule on this same bill not too long ago. Uh, I'm not sure why the House Republican majority has decided to spend their time in this fashion. Uh, I suppose next week we can come back and do a rule on a bill for the fifth time. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, as all of these pressing needs of our country and various challenges that merit our consideration uh, in terms of uh, applying and implementing solutions uh, remain unabated uh, without any attention from this Congress and the Republican majority. So sad state of affairs, but I'll yield to the ranking member to the extent he'd like to. I'm sure, I'm sure everybody wants to leave the room, but I, I just we do somebody so, but I, I just wanted to say you know, again I, I didn't mention the the SAP you know the the Biden administration put out a statement of administration policy that strongly opposes this bill, and what they said is and this is really what I'm trying to point out is that if you eliminate the public interest analysis if you say under this bill which is this will what this bill is all about that the administration whether it's Democrat Republican you know Trump Biden whatever no longer looks at the public interest before these exports take place, then what you're doing, and this is from the SAP, is you're eliminating any review of uh, price on consumers and manufacturers. You're eliminating any environmental impact of the exports. You're elim eliminating any uh, consideration of whether or not um, our national security uh, uh, is is negatively impacted. So 
All I'm really saying, pleading with you not to, not to support this bill, is that there's absolutely no reason not to look at our security interests, our environmental concerns, or, or price to consumers and manufacturers in our economy. That's all we're saying here, but thank you uh, again for the time. I thank the ranking member. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Gentleman yields back. Chair, thanks, the gentleman. Are there any other questions for the panel before us today? I guess the observation is that a pause can only last a maximum of 11 months. Thank God. Um, I want to thank you for appearing us before us today. And with no other questions, the witnesses are now excused. <laughs>